Hi, listeners. Before we dive into today's episode, I wanted to let you know that this episode is sponsored by The Draw Shop, and we've got something exciting for you. Let me ask you something. Have you ever been asked what you do? We all get asked this, right? Have you then answered and then got the response of totally glazed over eyes or just the look of someone politely smiling but definitely not caring? It sucks. I know. I've totally been there on both sides, actually. That's why my team and I at The Draw Shop now offer a service to help you perfect your elevator pitch so that people immediately understand how you can make their life better and so that you can use this anywhere in your marketing. It's the single statement that compels your prospects to take action right away. Here's what happens. You meet with an expert copywriter on our team to define the problem you solve, how you solve it, and the transformation your customers experience after working with you. From there, we'll turn that into a short and sweet elevator pitch just for you and create a compelling one-page visual story to help the world better understand your business and how you can help them. For a special limited time offer, we are offering you this service for one-third the usual price, valued at $1,500. Yep, 70% off. Again, this will only be available for a limited time, and we've already seen incredible results with our clients changing this one single statement. So to get your word perfect pitch today, head to www.thedrawshop.com forward slash elevator pitch now. That's www.thedrawshop.com forward slash elevator pitch. Okay, let's get into today's episode. You'll probably find that the hardest challenges to overcome in business are kind of narrowed down to three things. It's not having enough customers or prospects in your database to sell or resell to. It's not getting enough traffic to your website and not getting in front of enough people. Or it's not closing enough sales. Even if you are getting traffic or you do have a lot of people in your database, you're just not converting them. These are problems. Why are they problems? Because all of those lead to money. And if you're not making that money, you don't really have a business. Hey, Backstage Business friends, welcome to another episode. So in episodes 22 and 23, I talked about what you can do right now to move the needle in your business. In episode 22, I focused on how to discover the revenue generating activities you do that move the needle in your business and increase your cash flow so that you can design your life and your days and the time that you spend on those activities instead of the other tasks that you can probably outsource. And then in episode 23, I went into some marketing, like marketing 101 style and determining why anyone should want to buy from you, what the problem is that you solve for them and taking a deeper look at that and how you do that problem solving that is different than others and how you can transform your customer's life. And those were really part of the basics of this whole entire sort of a series that I'm going into. I've there's there's quite a number of episodes that I'm recording here and I'm sprinkling in some other interviews with some really great guests that just kind of apply to business in general, but In the episodes that I'm doing with Just Me, I'm focusing on the critical parts of your business that generate cash flow, and I'm putting them into small bite-sized chunks so that you can really digest the importance of them. And if you are new to business, it's going to be really great material for you, even if you are many, many years into your business, there might be some things that you realize I'm not doing that at all. And if you happen to be struggling in some areas like generating more cash flow, then I think you're really going to want to pay attention because I'm really telling you the things that have worked so well for my business. And that's why I'm sharing them with you and I'm trying to make them really actionable items. So that's the purpose of, of me going through all of this. So again, if you've missed out on any of those, episode 22 and 23, just really great foundation pieces. And then I'm just going to keep going, going deeper and deeper. Today, we're going to keep going deeper and talk about your conversion problem. Also, just a quick note 
on all of these episodes. You can find show notes to these on the podcast platform that you're listening to in the details section. But you can also visit each episode by going to thedrawshop.com slash 25, for example, for today's episode. For 22 and 23 that I just spoke of, you can go to thedrawshop.com slash forward slash 22 or thedrawshop.com forward slash 23, and you will be able to listen to the actual recording and get all the show notes there. Okay, so let's dive in. You know what's really exciting to me is solving problems. And I'm sure you know that feeling. It's like the best feeling ever to find a solution to something that's been weighing on you. And when you find that solution and then you execute on it and then you see the results, you just feel like a total rock star. It's an incredible feeling. And in these coming episodes, I'm going to be talking about that and, and solving these problems with you, but also how you can make your customer feel like that rock star because they found you, because you are going to be the ultimate solution to their problem. So when you feel that way and you've bought a service or worked with somebody that has solved a really deep problem that you have, you feel so good and you associate that good feeling with that business and you want to keep working with them and you want to refer them. And so we want to help you give that feeling to your prospects and your customers. So that's what we're going to be. That's what all of this is really about. You'll see in the coming episodes. But today, I am going to focus on identifying your biggest conversion problem and what you need to solve it. So, if you read business books or you're reading blogs or articles, or you just talk to business owners, you'll probably find that the hardest challenges to overcome in business are kind of narrowed down to three things. It's not having enough customers or prospects in your database to sell or resell to. It's not getting enough traffic to your website and not getting in front of enough people. Or it's not closing enough sales. Even if you are getting traffic or you do have a lot of people in your database, you're just not converting them. These are problems. Why are they problems? Because all of those lead to money. And if you're not making that money, you don't really have a business. So I remember days when my sales team would say to me, "Um, can you just turn that switch back on and and send me some more good leads? And I mean, it was kind of like that. That's like what they, they would ask if it was a slow week and they weren't getting enough appointments booked. They would ask that as if, you know, there's just this quick little tweak that you can do and then boom, tons of people are just knocking down your doors. And I think we all wish it was that easy, that you just put in dollars somewhere and it just spit out the kind of customers that you want. It's not that easy. It's not just about getting a bunch of people to you because the thing is, is you can spend a ton of money with Google or with Facebook and you can get a ton of traffic coming to your site. But are they people that you want? And even even so, with those people coming, what do you do with them? And how do you make sure that they convert? Do you think that people will just automatically buy because of of what you do? And the thing is, is it's not it's not about the amount of people you're getting in front of, but it's about what you do with those people. That is the real problem. And so many people spend wasted marketing dollars and see little to no ROI because they think that getting traffic is the cure to their low sales and conversions. If I just get more people, that low conversion is totally fine. No, we want to increase that conversion rate. Not converting those leads is actually the problem to your sales and conversions. The money you spend on marketing to get leads has to have a profitable ROI. It's as simple as that because if it doesn't, your marketing isn't working and needless to say, your business will not survive. So Here are some things that I've learned from all of the geniuses that I've studied from. And the main thing responsible for for our business at the draw shop taking off as quickly as it did over 10 years ago, 11 years ago, was the sales funnel that we built. And so having a system that automatically generates leads for you and then drops these leads into a sales funnel that automatically nurtures them into a conversion 
is absolutely key. And ideally, what happens is that you start to learn what each dollar of your money spent in advertising and marketing will generate you in revenue. So imagine, just imagine knowing that, that, okay, if I spend X amount of dollars here, I know that it's going to bring me an X amount of leads. And now I know that those leads are worth X amount of dollars for each lifetime value of that person. Imagine just knowing that, like knowing that I put in this and it generates that. Wouldn't that be an amazing feeling? Well, here's the thing. I can tell you this. If you're hoping that you're just going to get discovered or that you will create something and they will just come, then you probably don't have a solid business yet. And you probably already know that. You might be thinking, I don't have marketing dollars to spend If you don't have marketing dollars to spend, then you don't have an actual business going right now. Because there's definitely a lot of business that say, I've never advertised, I've never had to spend a dollar on Facebook or any kind of advertising. And they're like super proud of that. I've seen that many, many times and it makes me cringe a little bit, just being honest, especially because I believe so much that marketing and advertising are like the most essential part of your business. And I, but I do question these people and I'd, I'd almost want to look at their books and see where their dollars were spent. And maybe they just don't have it filed under advertising or marketing. But if that is the truth and they haven't, and they are doing just fine because they get 99% of their business from referrals, which many do, you know, especially in, in super specialized businesses, I would then say, imagine what kind of business they could be doing if they had the right sales funnel in place and the right advertising and marketing in place. And they were paying for advertising and marketing. Imagine what that could do. So if you are one of those people, I really invite you to look at that and say, what could my business look like if it wasn't just referral-based? So, and by the way, side note, referral, you should focus on that. That is a excellent form of of marketing and what kind of what you can do in terms of referrals. And that's a whole nother episode to talk about. I think I actually did a podcast on that once a while ago, but it's it's definitely a wonderful part of your of your marketing. But that's not what I'm talking about today. Today I'm talking about you need to spend money on your advertising and marketing in order to to get to those levels that you want to reach. So now the question is, well, how much should I be spending on my advertising? Now, I'm not a CFO, though at times, if you're an entrepreneur and business owner, you've definitely felt like it because you've crunched numbers, you've looked at your books, you're you're trying to figure out where you should be send, spending, where you shouldn't, you're, you're juggling. I kind of feel like I know what it's like to be a CF- CFO. I don't in- don't love it. That's not that's not my skill set. That's just me saying I'm not a CFO, so I'm not an expert of every industry and what should be spent. But I do know this. I know that if you Google, what should my advertising budget be in X industry, you're going to see some averages. There's going to be a bunch of information coming up saying, if you're in this industry, you shouldn't be spending more than 10%. If you're in this type of industry, you shouldn't be spending more than 20%. Some industries, 40%. But remember that these are all averages, and I invite you to question any of those numbers and understand that they are an average and that the reason people usually have those budgets in place is because they aren't sure how to most effectively spend their dollars. And so they're testing, which you should do. You should be testing because testing is is really great for, especially if you have a budget in place. Stick to that budget and test so that you can see what the results are. If you're losing money because you're spending too much on marketing, then you have to have a budget in place so that you can test to see what will work. And we are going to get into all of that in coming episodes on how to do that and, and what types of things you should be doing that you can test. But today, the purpose of today is that I want you to ask yourself if you are happy with your conversions. For the amount of people who see you, are you happy with that ROI? Just kind of do, just collect those numbers and really look at them. How many people are coming to see your business? Is it in the hundreds? Is it in the thousands? Is it a handful? And how many of those people that you're interacting with 
are converting? What does that percentage look like? And are you happy with it? And if not, I want you to look at the systems you have in place. Are you happy with that? When you go to sleep at night, do you have something that is running, running while you sleep that is automatically generating leads and appointments or even sales for you? You may or may not have that. And if you do have something, are you satisfied with the results that it's producing? So just take a moment to write down the process of how someone converts into a lead from the first time that they see you. How are they seeing you? How do they convert into a lead? And then how do they become a customer in your business? So just kind of write that down and think about, is it where you want it to be? And in the coming episodes, the non-interview episodes that are just with me and you sitting here talking about your business, I'm going to go deeper in bite-sized chunks, how to get your ideal customer, how to market to them, meaning what kind of copy do you write? What kind of ads do you put out? And then what does that automatic sales funnel look like? What should it look like? What are the components that you need to have at at a basic but highly effective level that you can have in place so that you can feel confident knowing that day after day, week after week, month after month, you have got a pipeline of leads that are coming in and how to qualify them and how to make appointments with them or just how to sell to them. So keep listening. Hey guys, I just want to say thank you so much for listening to this podcast. If you haven't already done so, would you do me a favor and go subscribe and review this podcast? My goal is to continue to deliver you content that will really move the revenue needle in your business and give you up-to-date content on anything else that can dramatically help your business. You can also find us at thedrawshop.com slash podcast where you can comment on the podcast or contact us directly with any issues you'd like me to address. Thanks again. I really, really appreciate you listening and I'll see you next time.